Hi everybody, I'm Ron Chera, host of Pheasants Forever Television. You know, a long time ago, I read a book called Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold. It was a fascinating read, and for good reason. Today, Aldo Leopold is considered the father of modern wildlife management, which may explain why Pheasants Forever started a Leopold education project. What's that all about? You just watch. The smell of a wildflower. The breeze in the trees. The world, as Aldo Leopold knew it, at a place he called the shack. A lot of people envision this farm as being this peaceful, quiet place where Leopold would come up and have quiet time to write. Really not true. The family would come up here and they did some backbreaking labor. This is the story of Aldo Leopold, a man who loved wild places, a man who taught us how to preserve them. Once a year, people gather in Wisconsin to pay homage to Aldo's beliefs, the man known as the father of wildlife management. Let's head on in and take a look. Way back in 1949, Aldo wrote about life in the Wisconsin woods, life around his family's revamped chicken coop. Aldo's book, The Sand County Almanac, became a sort of Bible for conservationists. It's a book of beliefs about how the natural world works and how we should better protect wild things. It's uh, become one of Pheasants Forever's mission of uh, education, and it was absolutely a natural fit. Which is why people have come to the old shack. Each fall, Pheasants Forever's Leopold Education Project meets to help people better understand Eldo's words. I think it's just such a, a powerful thing when, you, when you're so close to that book and you, the places and, and things described in it have such an impact on how you think about conservation. To be able to come here and, and walk on the ground, it really is like walking on hallowed ground. Right there, I think that might just be the sand flats. But I feel yeah. just so lucky to it's be able to now. be the, the person guiding folks through. It's a very emotional experience. A lot of people really feel like it's um, kind of a pilgrimage, you know, to come here. Another goal of the weekend? A lot of them would like to know more of the stuff that you guys know. People learn to teach conservation to people back home. Three-fourths of the people that attend these workshops are sponsored by their local members of Pheasants Forever. What was the first car that Aldo bought for the family? And tell us about that. Well, I was just telling Richard that we had a Model T Ford. Aldo's daughter, Nina Leopold Bradley, always attends. I think the Leopold Education Project that Ed and all of you are doing is almost the most important thing that can happen in our society. I think we have an ecologically illiterate society. Illiterate because Aldo believed, even back in the 30s and 40s, that prairies were disappearing and development endangered wild places. These are lessons we should all learn. And getting involved in our community, looking at habitat in a different way, like Leopold did, uh, reading the landscape around us and protecting it. So what's your pan? Nine. nine. So we need nine. That's two, five. Three That's a three up, three down. Got it. And we need 15 five. and nine. We'll be in good shape. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Even Dutch ovens play a role on this weekend. Apple brown daddy. This is uh, yams, <laughs> or sweet potatoes, depending on where you're from. And the reason we, we include Dutch oven cooking is because Leopold uh, used Dutch oven. Blow off steam with a little light work, <laughs> that's outdoor cooking. Southwest cornbread. We refer to it as organized chaos. You have to boil first. And get them soft. Yes, it's soft. It's uh, teaching 60 plus people how to cook dinner uh, in Dutch ovens. Good food, good lessons learned, one more reason. We love the woods. It's just a pleasure to meet people from all over the U.S. that come here to gather because we all um, share a common interest and uh, that's developing land ethic for the future. A land ethic scribed by Aldo on the pages of One Man's Almanac. We let the dead veteran season for a year in the sun. We came upon a great slab of bark freshly torn from the trunk of the roadside oak. Such faith, I suppose, is the kind that moves mountains. Words 
to live by. Thanks for the advice, Eldo. Okay, so teachers and other leaders learn about Eldo's lessons of conservation, but how do they get passed on? Aldo Leopold's world revolved around the natural world around us. Much of his famous book, The Sand County Almanac, focused on education, teaching people to preserve and protect our wild resources. So what you doing? Uh, writing stuff. That's just what they're doing in Osceola, Wisconsin. Rock of history, tell us your story. I just think when you're in the woods, it, it fills a spot in your soul that nothing else will fill, and they, I think you take that with you. There are two spiritual dangers in not owning a farm. Osceola Middle School teachers use Aldo Leopold's work as a tool to teach kids. The very stuff of Pheasants Forever's Leopold Education Project. Two years ago we started the Aldo Leopold curriculum. The day like today is important because they need to know that they're going to be stewards of the land. They need to be outdoors and to get themselves involved in it. We're taking a scavenger hunt with GPSs around and counting like rings on a tree. We're sitting around a couple campfires and discussing the good oak. All those good oak. When the covered wagons were still passing over my road into the great northwest. Each month we read a section of the San County Almanac and then we try and incorporate that into our classes. It's not a sixth grade reading level book. Um, there's tough vocabulary words in there, but they pull things out. They pull out the important messages and important pieces in their own way. On this day, the kids read Aldo's story about the good oak. See, when Aldo cut wood, he believed he was doing more than creating firewood. Aldo believed he was also getting a history lesson. Rings of trees tell stories of life. Rings reveal forgotten summers of drought, hard winters, even times of fire. We grow similar to like the tree rings. I mean, we can plot our life just based on the tree. You can see there's scars in the tree ring and there's scars in our life too. You know, and then we have all these different branches where we go on different paths. I've been actually surprised that they like it as much as they do because I think it is tough. Um, but I think, it, again, if they are introduced to it at this age, then when they're older, then they'll have that good memory of, re of, of learning it when they were young. I'm not sure there's a better thing for kids to do than to put them, their, their games away and uh, get out in the outdoors and, and see what thing, uh, the environment has to offer. We're gonna draw an analogy, which is a comparison between the Good Oaks life and between your life. Think all those words won't educate a kid? Well, just listen. Especially nowadays with global warming, that gr the carbon dioxide is greenhouse gases, that the trees absorb that and put out oxygen for us to breathe. I think that's important that he showed everybody that. How many sixth graders do you know who can talk like that? The earth is so good to us that I think we need to be good back and be careful of what we do. We're really just learning about the environment and how we can protect it because the generations before us haven't taken care of it as well as they should. Even if they just appreciate being outside and the wildlife and the nature, I think even though that's not measured on a test, very valuable valuable to students and valuable to teachers too. The value sometimes to uh, certain people is that it's tough to measure, but I think from our standpoint is that it's immeasurable uh, when you read their journals and you look at documentation of what they've gained and experienced. It's just an unendless value of, uh, of knowledge that these kids are picking up. The book didn't become popular until years later, and the story continues. A very simple lesson, yet so profound and learn from the father of conservation. All of it passed along to a kid. I feel that it's very important that we take care of our earth. 
just exposing them to Aldo Leopold's work is great at this age, and we hope that they revisit it later in life. Quite a program indeed. If you'd like to discover more about the Leopold Education Project, we'll have the information just ahead. On behalf of Raven and me, thanks for watching.